Welcome back my darlings. Today I'm doing this amazing RS6. I love this colour, it's fantastic. Uh, but it's a bit swirly, very dusty at the moment because of all that Saharan dust we've had and a bit of snow and a bit of rain, it's kind of welded it on. But underneath that, um, it's got a bit of iron uh, contamination, I think. It feels, paint feels very rough. So uh, it's gonna have full wash decon and then a single step polish with Shoal S20 Black. So the wash phase, I'm gonna start off with first and uh, that is going to consist of snow foam i'm using built hamber auto foam at four percent pir i've also put a bit of uh geon foam in there to thicken it up a little bit so that'll make it dwell a bit longer which is good um followed by a wash using Meguiar's wash plus uh, because i could do with the mild abrasive side of that to really get into the dirt that's on here and shift as much as possible uh, and then rinsed off Chemical decon will be TARDIS for the tar, uh, Corosol for the iron fallout, and then I'm going to do a uh, physical claying as well. So I'm going to use the Built Hamber uh, light clay bar for that and Built Hamber Auto QD as the lube. Uh, and then wash it all off again. <laughs> Probably just a bit of um, Meguiar's Auto Foam for that simple wash there. Ugh. Okay, so not Meguiar's Auto Foam, but Built Hamber Auto Wash and uh, the wheels the wheels might need a bit of work. The faces are pretty good, the barrels, um, well the owner said that they've been just getting harder and harder to clean, so he hasn't done them as much. So I've got the built Hamber Auto wheel, I think that should be okay. Um, I've also got uh, Anachem's, or Anachem, Anachem. Um, I've got their Cleanse product, which would be great for the tires anyway, but it could be, it's a very good wheel cleaner anyway, so that might help doubling those two bits up together. That's what I'm gonna start off with first, and then when we get to the polishing stage, I'll uh, brief you on that bit then. Right, let's get on. I've got quite a few befores here, mainly because I wanted you to really see what I was up against um, and the amount of swirling that was in the paint. But there's a lot of dirt and debris to get off first. So yeah, it could be a good detail this one. I think you're gonna enjoy the end results. I certainly did. Okay, so I'm only showing one wheel in this video today, but I, the same process was followed on them all. Apart from the fact all the others, I didn't pre-rinse it. Uh, I only did it on this wheel because I wanted to see what was gonna shift with the pressure washer and what wasn't. But on the wheel now is some built hamber auto wheel and on the tire is the Anakem uh, cleanse. So what I do now, I'm brushing it all off. I've let it dwell for five minutes, uh, but I just edited it together, make it look a bit quicker. Didn't think you wanted to see all of that and on the black rim it's quite difficult to see the bleeding anyway and, and then after i go through this with various brushes i then apply the anakem cleanse to the tire again and the wheel uh, and wanted to see if that made any difference it didn't really what i could have done with which i didn't have with me was the malco break off that would have really got in there so when i go back and have a look at this at some point in the future i'm going to do that and uh, get those rims looking absolutely brilliant i will say though that that anakem cleanse cleans the tires brilliantly. I didn't have to scrub them and they came up perfectly. So for this here, I've just been uh, foaming it with Built Hamber Auto Foam and rinsing it off. And now I'm washing it with the Meguiar's Wash Plus, which I think I mentioned in a few previous videos and at the beginning of this, is um, a wash shampoo that's got a very fine abrasive in, which is great for just helping 
clean off a bit more of the gunk. There's a lot of bonded contaminants on this paintwork, so anything was going to help. Uh, but you can still see once I go through this and all the chemical decontamination, uh, when I get to claying, there's still a lot of gunk on the car. So I'm just going around now using the pet dryer to dry off the majority of the lower panels and that's because I want to apply the AutoSmart TARDIS. Now the TARDIS has to be applied to a dry panel in order to be effective. So I'm going around applying that and then wiping down the areas that I've applied it to with uh, a microfiber. I am changing to that approach now. It is definitely more effective than the dealer detailing brushes I used to use. But also uh, the detailing brushes were falling apart from the TARDIS because it was dissolving the glue that held the bristles in. So there you go. Um, tell you one thing though, I got through about half a litre of TARDIS on this car. Now right, so the chemical decontamination, which is the Meguiar's Wash Plus and the Corosol and the TARDIS, that's complete now. Now it's on to the mechanical decontamination and you can see just how much is still coming off. Right then, washed, deconned, dried. It's about four, almost five hours later. Is it? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's about four hours later to get to that stage. The claying took a long time. The car was dirty, you probably saw from the clips just how bad that was. Uh, bearing in mind I used Meguiar's Wash Plus, which is an aggressive wash, uh, and Corosol, and a lot of TARDIS. Still a lot came off, so, doesn't matter. We're all good. We're in a great position now to um, polish. It's getting towards the end of the day. What I'm going to do now is polish the bonnet, um, see what sort of level we can come up with, and then do the whole car with that tomorrow. So I'm actually going to start with the Chemical Grise Hexlogic Yellow Pad, which is their most aggressive one. Because I'm using Shoal Concepts S20 Black, that can finish down. So that shouldn't be a problem using that pad. And with the paint on this car, knowing that it's now it's quite hard, uh, you might think, you're not supposed to go in with the um, really strong and uh, hardest compound you've got available to you. Combination, sorry. And it's true, but I know the paint can take it and I will do a small patch first just to check and if I think it, after that I will just leave it a bit of a hazy finish, I'll drop down to the uh, Hexlogic green pad. But I'm pretty sure the yellow can take it. But, um, the car can take the yellow pad and the S20 black is aggressive but wears, breaks down. So it should be a very good combination. But let's see. So I can move you over. To mask up half the bonnet, do a 50 50, and uh, see what we get to. So, enjoy this and uh, looking forward to seeing what this results could be like. Okay, so keep an eye on the reflection of that tree on the right hand side of the bonnet, or the right hand side as you're seeing it, um, and just watch how much clearer this gets as I'm doing the polishing. Really good work here, uh, and good, good results. I love doing this. I love, absolutely love machine polishing the cars. I really enjoy it. It's so satisfying. Um, but also, I particularly like the one-stepping. You get a really good results without chasing that nth degree. And um, whilst it's great getting those like uh, absolutely 100% defect, defect removal, it's really difficult. Whereas getting to 80% is much easier. And uh, well, yeah, 
it makes the car look so good. Okay, so we're back again. Uh, this is the following day, and I was going to give the Ponit another hit because I thought I was, it came up really well, but there was a bit more that could be removed, and it did improve it. And the rest of the car, I actually found it didn't need it. Um, maybe I was working the polish better, uh, but I can say for sure is I was stretching the area when I was working on this bonnet too much. Really, I should have been working an area that was about 18 inches by 18 inches ish. Uh, that is something like three or four pad widths. I was going over that and it was stretching the polish. So I think that's why I had to do it again. The rest of the car, I didn't do that and I came up with much better results from a single stage. This is a brilliant 50-50 coming up and it shows you the difference <laughs> of uh, what I achieved but also the state it was in before. So I switched over to my rotary here because that's what I've got the um, smaller backing plate for. I'm going to get a three inch one for my um, Das 6 Pro, but I've been looking into getting a dedicated three inch machine, so I haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. Plus, I've got this with the rotary and it works really well. Quick IPA wipe down here before we get into the Gion Kanko. Now, I've really sped up the application process here and also a lot of the polishing because I just didn't think it was particularly interesting footage if it was going slower. But let me know in the comments if you think you'd liked it to have been uh, a bit slower so you could see more of what was going on or if you'd like different camera angles um, just to help me improve the content. Okay, we're just coming up to the last bit of bits, a bit of tyre shine, that's uh, Gion tyre, and now it's time for some afters. <laughs> 